curious fly fisher should plug your ears and cover your eyes because the foul stench of that's not fly fishing permeates this video. This is one ugly method of reaching virtually any water depth no matter the size of stream or river. It starts with an ugly adaptation of spin fishing on floating line and degenerates into a catapulting motion of fully leaded weight on 350 grain density compensated full sink lines. There's likely to be but one video on jig head streamers, so let's get you set up. Today's articulated streamer pattern advancement has been incredible and there are beautiful streamers out there that push water and have all sorts of action. This isn't that. In fact, jig head streamers set streamer pattern development back to the 1970s. Let's face it, fishing jig head streamers is ugly fishing. It's about getting deep. Keep whatever pattern you tie onto a jig head hook slender. The head of the jig should be the thickest bit of the fly. Reality is that if you tie two woolly buggers together, tie in a couple of chicken feathers to lay the entire length of the fly, and join them with folded over Dacron backing and maybe add a couple of red beads in between, you're doing good and ready to fish. Because you're reaching the dark side of the moon water that mankind hasn't fished much this year, pattern isn't the central focus. This is get it in and get it deep ASAP to get fish holding at the bottom of the pool or run to take notice. There's lots of options at your local stores, but not all jig heads are created equally. The weight is the weight, that's fine. But the steel used to make the hooks is widely variable. I've wasted a lot of time tying my flies on cheap jig heads only to lose some incredible fish because the hook bent out. Give the hook a test at your store. If you can bend the hook out with your bare hands, don't waste 15 to 30 minutes of your fly tying life tying a fly onto a 25 cent jig head. I use two sizes of jig heads, one eighth ounce and one quarter ounce. I've found that quarter ounce heads simply shine in deep water, fast water, deep pockets and plunge pools, deep runs, the heart of deep rapids, severe drop-off zones in rivers and lakes, and are simply wonderful at locating active fish when searching large deep clides while stripping quickly. I've found that 1 8 ounce jig heads are best on small to mid-sized streams and rivers with at least moderate current and short deep pockets like plunge pools and pocket water that require you to get deep straight away. If the water isn't flowing quickly, there's no obvious advantage when fishing jig heads on these waters over typical beadhead streamers. When launching a quarter ounces of lead, I fish a 7 weight. You can do it on a lighter rod, but once you swap out a floating line for the heavy stuff, you'll want a 7 weight at least. The 8 ounce jig head is a little more doable on a lighter rod. I don't advise it unless you know how to cast this setup, but I do use a 4 or 5 weight rod when fishing smaller streams using the 1 8 ounce jig head. I tend to only fish floating or a serious full sink fly line with jig heads because I'm likely wading a small to medium sized river and using a floating line or drifting a larger river and have room for a complete setup ready to use. Yes, sink tip lines have their place, but because the weight of the fly is going to dominate the action, it becomes a redundant, almost moot component. You can use any floating line because that jig is going to dominate the cast anyway. For larger rivers where I'm aiming for the bottom, I fish a 350 grain full sink density compensated fly line. Because the fish are likely to be focused on the huge meal, they spend less time worrying about the elephant cable the fly is tied onto in most cases. To protect your time investment tying these flies, use 2 feet of 40 pound butt section to 3 feet of 20 pound to the fly on sinking lines and 3 feet of 40 pound butt to 12 feet of 14 fluoro or mono on a floating line setup. The other leader consideration is that this setup will attract all predatory fish living in your water. Where big browns, walleye and pike overlap, I'm always tempted to tie on a 10 inch steel leader because I've lost far too many of my jig heads to huge pike and walleye. Their ripping teeth and sharp gill plates just simply tear through leaders. If you want to fish a smaller streamer in tandem with a jig head, I recommend tying a tag end dropper off the main leader about 18 inches up the leader from the big fly. Articulated or two hook streamers tend to bunch up and fold over itself if you tie a dropper fly to the bend of the streamer. The benefits of tying the smaller streamer up the leader is that the heavy jig head acts like a downrigger setup for the smaller streamer, holding it at depth through the entire retrieve. When drifting a river, the lifting action off the bottom to the boat often entices a big trout to eat, so always pause the fly a second or two to allow that commitment. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Woo! You take them. 
a fish just came right out from the depth following that big heavy streamer and I almost lift to cast it again and I saw this big shape right in behind my fly and I was like oh yeah. and it was just like oh no I have to leave my fly in the water and I did and he just did a swirl back and just absolutely pounded that trailer fly. My favorite aspect of this setup is that because you have to cast with the hang time of an NFL punter you sometimes lose control of your cast and wind up in a tree 40 degrees above the horizon. But fear no tree because the 20 pound tippet you use allows you to pull your fly free. Do watch out because the recoil is about 100 miles an hour if it comes free. The cast is essentially a spin fishing cast. Don't try 10 and 2 with this. Simply swing the fly backward with 10 to 15 feet of fly line, pause to allow your rod to flex deeply, fully load, then launch it forward at a slight sidearm trajectory, stopping your rod tip so the fly and line aim at the hilltop or treetops and allow the fly and line to arc to the sky and carry. A small amount of energy in a loaded rod will carry this setup a long distance. It takes some getting used to, but once you get it, it's a game of roll, shoot, sink, retrieve, and takes little to have a great day of streamer fishing. If you find that you can't cast this monstrosity, even after all this wonderful help in how to cast such a beast, there is one proven method of casting. Grab the jig by the lead head and just toss the damn thing across the river into the depth of the pool and let it sink before jigging it back to you. Honestly, you just can't go too wrong. A word about fishing this setup. When fishing plunge pools, be sure to cast it right into the white wave at the very head. There's often a big pole trout or rainbow sitting under the plume. The current often comes plunging in and has eroded a deep, calm pocket immediately underneath. This is prime big fish holding water and there's no better setup to get it in, punching through the current and dropping through the water column quickly. When fishing deep runs with the full sink line, it's often best to cast upstream at 30 degrees and let it drop. As the line comes parallel to your location, swing your rod to your opposite side and drag and pulse. You don't want it lifting at all. If drifting a river, this is where the rower plays a critical role. The boat has to be moving half the speed of the current so that the water is worked at depth properly. The upstream angled cast will sink and as the line passes the boat, the same cross body action is employed and the setup is swung and jigged through the main depth. This setup shines in deep troughs, especially spring and fall when the water is cold and there's little to no hatch activity. In small stream situations, it's often tough to get your fly into the zone immediately as so often required. This setup is a rocket to depth and not only allows you to shoot the line fully, but it also allows you to mend your line to set the drift to exactly where you want it without lifting the fly too much, allowing it to stay in the depth zone before dropping right into the sweet spot at the heart of the trough. 